Hello, good afternoon everybody. Sorry I'm a bit late. I'll, um, I'll be quite honest, I couldn't find any batteries for my microphone. Uh, but we're okay now. Um, hi Janet, Mary, Helen, Wendy, hello Julie. And have we got any on Facebook yet? I think I need to refresh. Refresh Facebook. So I've got some new stuff to show you. Um, hi Lisa, I'm very good, thank you. Alison, um, oh hello Rita. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I, I couldn't, I can't really let you know when I'm a bit late like that, but it doesn't happen very often, does it? But we're here. And uh, hello, Salome and Blodwin and Stephanie and Jenny and Sue and Jane and Jennifer and Stephanie. We could just, we could just go on, couldn't we? Um, Facebook. So, oh, here we are. Hello, Helen, Sheila, hurrah, she says. Yay. Uh, hi, Jen and Janet and Cynthia and Samantha. And Julie Jones, wet in, is it wet? It's wet here, actually. It's, uh, but we, I, don't, I don't mind. We've had enough of the um, the dry heat. The garden's very thirsty at the moment. Hello, Dwayne in Northern California. Helen, hello to you. Hello, Irene and Patrice and Elizabeth. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Ruby Coco. <laughs> Wet in Cornwall, um, says Anne. Anyway, I'll show you some new bit. I want to show you panels first because these are new and exclusive to us. I know I've shown you the panels before and you may have seen these on Create and Craft but we had so many questions from people saying I just want one panel I don't want the big one I just want one panel so we have had one panel printed for you so of course it's half the price so the bigger panels we won't be getting until next week um, they will be on Create and Craft again on Sunday morning seamless Sunday this week um, but we do now have single panels for you and I think they're £8.99 I'm going to make a gift bag, a large gift bag with this one um, today and we're going to look at the tabs at each end of the zip because we, I said we'd do that a couple of weeks ago so that's what we're going to do and I'm going to clean out my old machine if I've got a screwdriver so it's a bit, bit disorganised today. Uh, Jenny Jones is in bed with arthritis gout, oh no, oh boring in bed, hmm, hmm. now then I'm, I'm sure you would still be able to operate a sewing machine without your feet got a fancy one like mine you'll be able to do that um sue's got a pink parcel oh yeah I th that was deliberate of course it was my blouse sue is um at mayfair forest Witch, sorry is uh, I, I deliberately chose this to match with my surroundings anyway this is panel number one so we've got christmas baubles all in squares just a touch under 10 centimeters square 100 percent cotton designed by my daughter and printed in the uk and i just think it's it's it has a, a lovely warmth to it doesn't it it's a cozy christmas let it snow name of the panel and we've got poinsettias and christmas stockings and it's there's actually quite a lot you can do with this so for your eight pounds 99 if all you were to do was to fold that in half and cut down it you've got a christmas cushion or two if you use a different one for the back um gift bag wise you could make one huge one and i love the idea of gift bags because they're recyclable because you give the gift of a gift bag as part of the gift and then hopefully you get it back again next year um and i'm thinking as well don't look at these as lots of different squares that you have to cut out and sew back together again it's a piece of fabric that's already patched work so if you wanted to gather it if you wanted to draw string it um, if you wanted to cut into any of the squares it doesn't matter you don't don't feel you have to cut all of those out individually so that's the Christmas one then we also have gnomes and again I know I showed you these the other day but I showed you the larger version you asked for the smaller version so you've got a smaller version so you've got the name gnome written out in the middle so O for Ola and E for Eric are all the names and then these are all in different kind of situations so let's see if we can lift these up he's dressed as a pirate now my pirate doesn't have a beard but the skull and crossbones does and the parrot does and then there's Ola picking flowers and Eric's just got out the bath Ola's dressing up as a fairy Eric's just dreaming of cakes Ola's getting ready for bed and then the two of them disappearing into the sunset there's Ola dressed up as Mrs Santa Claus um, Eric's a clown and that is a bit impatient in that one. It looks like he's waiting for a bus. On the G he's got his swimming costume on and then he's digging up carrots and then it's all kind of repeated down to the bottom like so. So it's a little bit of fun. If you've got the Eric and Ola 
um, gnomes from my Half Yard Winter book. Might be quite nice to make them something out of this as well. So again, you can quilt it. You can cut them out individually. I made bunting using just the gnome letters. Um, you can make a drawstring bag with it. You could make uh, money. You can cut them up, put sashing in the middle and make a baby quilt out of it. So lots of things that you can do. And then this is exactly the same panel, but it's got a linen print behind it. So all of the same images and everything, but a, a little bit more subtle. That was the most popular colour, actually. On, um, on Crate and Craft when we launched them on Sunday. So again, Crate and Craft don't have these. So these are the smaller versions. These are half the size. Still got all of the gnomes on there, but not quite as big. So if you want a smaller project, or if you can't stretch to the £17.99 for the big one, then go for the little one there. Um, Mayfair Ferrari Switch. What's your name? I'm starting to make gift bags this year. No more wasting wrapping paper. Um, I, well, I'm like that as well. I, I just think it's... It's nice to receive back again. It's the, it's the Japanese philosophy, isn't it, with, with Furoshiki, um, which we'll be doing in the Half Yard Club later on in December, that you wrap a present in fabric on the condition that you get it back again with a gift the next year. But it'd be nice to pass this around the whole family. So, you know, re I think that's the way forward, isn't it? Recyclable gift giftware. Um, hi, Sylvia. Spent this morning indoors it's rained all day it's been quite nice today i've been for a nice long walk with bobbin in the sunshine um i've pieced together the block of the month from half yard club enough bits to do my own binding not sure maybe just bag it out what's that or oh, what's, what's everyone else doing with your block of the month because it's the piecing it together the putting it together this month isn't it the finishing off let us know what you're doing hi annette dorothy thank you nice to meet you too debbie pleasure um hello jean Right. Oh, hi, Alan. How's you? He's, he's still making sock slippers. <laughs> you sent me an email. Have you? I haven't seen your email, Alan. Um, been busy and made two more bags. Wow. Um, cleaned mine last week. Needle thread. Well, oh, OK. We'll have a chat about those as well, because I might have a solution for you for wonky needle threaders. Right. So those are the panels. Um, when those are gone, we're not having them reprinted. So kind of a limited edition. So if you wanted to get any hold of any of those, the gnomes aren't particularly Christmassy, but if you want the Christmas one, I would do that pretty soon because um, not going to be here for very much longer, I don't think. We were talking left-handed scissors the other day. We got some. Um, Kim was saying, actually, these are our Fiskars, so th they're a really, really good brand, but they don't do the fancy ones. They don't do the rainbow handles or the marbled handles or anything in Fiskars. I don't know why, but um, they are they are left-handed scissors. So those are the only ones that we can get hold of at the moment. But if you're looking for some, they are now on the website, gone on today. Hello, Delia in California. Hi, Deirdre. Just been given a Faf Time Matic 6120 sewing machine. Ooh, a button wanted. Um, Nice gift, though. Any tips welcome, she says. If anybody's got one of those, it'd be nice to hear from you. Now then, these... I don't want to open them, because somebody's going to be having these, because we don't have very many. We have um, uh, fabric strip rolls on the website, and these are Lewis and Irene, but they are very limited. We've only got a few of these, because we just couldn't get hold of them. So this one is... Fabulous 40s. If I lift that up without going too much out of focus, you'll get an idea of what the range is. You may recognise the range. If you really, really, really want me to undo it and show you, let me know. But there will be pictures on the website of what the fabrics are in here. So you've got 40 strips of fabric, and those are two and a half inches wide, as you would expect from a fabric roll like this. But again, very limited. We, we can't really get hold, or we can't get hold of any more. This is it. What we've got is the lot. So we've got a great price on those as well. So that one is your Fabulous 40s. Oh, no, Fabulous 40s, sorry. This is, oh, I can never say that. Heja. I always get it wrong. Kim, Kim corrects me all the time, but I still don't get it right. Heja Glow. And then, oh, this is a nice one because it's Bumbleberries. And Bumbleberries is Lewis and Irene's blender, so it's kind of got circles all over it. So you've got a taster there of practically the whole range of Bumbleberries. Those would look lovely in a quilt just on their own. And again, you've got 40 two and a half inch strips there, so just to show you there, if I don't go too wobbly. But again, we don't have very many. We just can't get hold of these colours. But if you're just using them on their own, if you're using them as sashing and binding, 
you've got a really great price for such a big stash there. I don't know what the price is, you'll have to have a look on the website. And don't forget that Crate and Craft Club members, Crate and Craft Club members, listen to me, Half Yard Club members will get you 10% discount. Um, this one is Country Life. Is that this one? Yes. So we've got the Country Life um, fabric strips, again, 42 and a half inches, but we also have Country Life 10 inch squares. And again, not very many. We just can't get hold of these at the moment. They fly out. Um, so this one, again, I'm not going to undo it all, but we'll have a quick flip through. I love these. I love the colors. I'd like to live there. I love the chickens. And the flowers, look a little bee on that one. There's more chickens and more chick. Oh, and pheasant. We had a pheasant in the garden the other day. Um, Tyler said, he says, there were, we get the neighbour's cats coming into the garden. They come in, they're, they're really nosy against the window like that. And um, he said, that, I thought there's, there's a cat against the window again, but hang on a minute, it's got a beak. Cats don't have beaks. We had a pheasant in the garden. They have beaks. Um, so just have a quick flip through here. So these are the same prints that you're going to get in the jelly roll as well. But these are 10 inch squares and Lewis and I are in, as you know, just really lovely quality. Hi Yvonne. 34.99 for the strips. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, sorry, June. Can't remember offhand. And there we go. All different colours. That's a lovely one. But that's the same as that one, but in different colours. So you get an idea there. But in total here, you've got 42 10 inch squares. That is an awful lot of fabric. You imagine if you're making something to sell, if you've got a craft stall, um, you'd need two pieces of this with a zip on the top and your own lining fabric and you've got a, a makeup bag. So you could make 40, uh, sorry, 21 makeup bags with all of those and then charge a pretty penny because it's Lewis and Irene. Um, these are the other 10 inch squares that we have. And again, we don't have very many. It's probably gone by now. Um, and these are he Heja. Heja Glow? Oh, I don't know. That's the same as the, um, the I want to say Jelly Roll, but they're not, are they? And the fabric strips that we have as well. So if you're interested in these, but you did want it, didn't want to see, I'll take one of those strips off, actually, and we can have a quick look. Diana says she loves the fabric. I love Louis and Irene. That's one, one of the reasons why we stock it. So... Oh, that's pretty with a dove slope with a heart in the middle and I'll just have a flick through I shan't show you oh no no gnomes from the back we love a gnome do we not but remember yep thank you Lisa you do get your 10% discount if you're a half yard club member but I'm not expecting these to last very long because we we really could only get a few in so if you want them I need to be quick for that one Right, Yvonne's making things for a craft fair and hasn't got a clue what to charge. I don't know, I don't do them. Does anybody else um, make things for craft stalls that could give Yvonne an idea of what to charge price-wise? What are you making, Yvonne? What kind of thing are you making? Oh, that might help us sort you out. Um, now these are... Lock Lewis, so we've got five inch squares here. There's 42 pieces in each one of these. I shan't go through them all because you probably know the ranges anyway. But Lock Lewis is the one that has the, um, oh, Angus. Angus? What are they called? The Highland cattle, you know what I mean. Um, so those are all of the colours that we have in there. And again, can't, we couldn't get hold of very many and that's it. That's the last of the stock. We can't get hold of any more. And this one is just called Noel. And you're getting all of those. But these are a nice, nice idea. Again, if you just sew them all together and make a big quilt out of them. Um, okay, so that's everything that we have for you. Julie Jones is making an exploding box. Fabulous. Um, yes, Peggy Sue says, don't forget to add your time in the price. It's difficult though, isn't it? I, well, I, I can imagine it's quite difficult because... Um, your time's really priceless, isn't it? And it does seem, a lot of people will think that because you've made it yourself, it's not going to be as expensive. And it should be more because you have made it yourself. If you must produce things, then of course you can be able to get them for less. But um, yeah, 
Um, Jane did a church craft store last weekend and sold hardly anything. People have been very cautious with the money at the moment. Oh, really? I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that's happening at the moment. Um, Carol's bought some of the scissors. What a caper trying to get left-handed scissors. My last ones I had for 18 years and they were Fiskars too. It is actually, and it's important, isn't it, Carol? I have, um, I picked up a pair of left-handed scissors by mistake once and it hurts. It hurts when you're using the wrong ones. Could have knocked me down with a feather, had a sale on Etsy yesterday. Did you? How did you do? That not how do you do? How how did you do? Hopefully that was really, really um um productive for you. Our time is a finite resource we need to you're absolutely right, yes. Um Oh, jeans in wait in the waiting room to say private orthopedic consultant for a hip replacement. Oh, hopefully that's going to be quick. Um, any more gnome kits? I'm not sure, Diane. At the moment, Crate and Craft have had all of them and um, all, they haven't processed all of the orders yet. So if I've got any left, they will come back. But I'd, I'm, I'm not too hopeful, to be honest. Anyway, tabs at the end of zips. Let's get on with this one, shall we? So I've cut out two lots of nine of the, um, the Let It Slow Christmas squares. And I've put some H640 on the wrong side. I've joined that one. You can see that. And then I've just quilted by sewing along the line. So it looks as though those have been pieced together. They haven't, you know, but, you know. Oh, hi, Anne. How's the other half? Um, and I've cut out two pieces of lining to the same size as each one of those. I'm just going to pop my iron on while we're doing this making Christmas tree decorations to sell on our Cat Rescue virtual store. Oh, that's a nice idea. That's what, um, that's who uh, Lisa works with. Um, so I think I'll be cheap and cheerful, don't want to bring it home. That's a point. Oh, Leanna, if she doesn't come down here very often, does Bobbin. Um, she came and had a sniff around while we were setting up earlier on, but then went back inside again. I think it's a bit cold in here compared to the house. Right. Oh, everyone's asking, how's your hubby, Anne? Is this, are you still at his bedside? Or is he up? Is he okay now? Hopefully. Hopefully he's all right. Right. So two pieces of lining to the same side. Let me just turn this on. That would help. Um, and then we'll put the zip in. Now, my zip, there is nothing wrong with having the zip that goes into the end of the bag. Um, it can be quite bulky. Um, because you know, you've got the whole of the zip that turns into the lining that way. But it does actually look quite neat if you have a bit of fabric each side. Some of the comments that I'd seen said that the fabric disappears into the side, into the side seam, so I'd suggest that you make it wider. So let's do a little bit of measuring here. So my three blocks together are just under 12 inches. I've got an 11 inch zip and I'm going to chop the ends of it. Um, the stoppers on these are actually plastic, um, so I shouldn't do too much harm to the sewing machine, but wherever I can, I do like to buy a zip that's too long and then just chop these off. Just in case, we don't want the needle to hit that. I like to leave at least an inch for my fabric tabs on the end of each one here. But let's make a little bit more of a feature of that. And I think that's going to be an inch and a quarter. So my tabs, because that's, that's an inch and a quarter from the end of the zip to the end of the fabric. And of course, I want my tabs to, tabs to overlap that. So I'm going to do my tabs two inches long. These will be too big. And I'm just kind of rough cutting them at the moment because I like to cut them bigger and then cut them down to size. So my zip's going to be one inch wide this way. In general, zips are one inch wide or two and a half centimetres. So I need this way of the fabric to be at least an inch and a half. That's an inch and a half there. Just, no, that's two inches. Because I'll have a seam allowance down each side as well. And what I'm going to do, as lots of people do things differently to me, so 
I'll just sort of show the way that I do it. So as these are going on the end, they're going to stick out this way and they're going to be too wide that way as well. Lena, we're doing tabs on ends of zips and cleaning sewing machines today. So I don't need that anymore. Let's move my lining out of the way and my mouse out of the way and bring in the machine whose accessory compartment isn't quite on properly. There we go. And I'm just going to sew these right sides together. So one of these, each side of the zip, if you do have right and wrong sides, then make sure you're sewing these right sides together. Like so. And I'm just going to sew across the end and I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let's bring that over a little bit more. And just sew straight across. Oh, I've got a green thread in there. No, so it's okay. Wait a minute. <coughs> press that back and then we'll do the same on this end but I'll need to make sure that the ends of my zip are together like so and pop that on there I don't have any glue in my glue stick I don't think I think I'll run out oh I haven't oh so if you do have a glue stick might be an idea to just pop a little bit of glue right on the end of there just so that when you place it on your fabric it holds the end of the zip together don't rush out and buy it if you don't have any but it might help a little bit and then we'll do the same on that side like so always put the lid back on these things because they do tend to dry up very quickly and they will sew straight across the end and the reason I like to do it this way um, is because or make make them bigger I should say I do it that way um, is because I find it really fiddly and awkward to make these the exact width straight away so I've got that now it's up to you at this point you can put this into the bag as it is or you can trim it down but let's trim it down so Again, let's open this up and I'm just going to pull that back and glue it together just to hold it in place. You don't need to do that again, but if you've got your glue stick, then that's a, a good way of using it. Let's pop that down there. So you can at this point sew this directly over the top of your bag and leave the ends as they are, or you can trim them down so they're exactly the same width of the zip. So as long as you make sure that that's a straight line and it's the same width all the way down, that should be fine. These are still too long. It's easier to cut a bigger piece of fabric down to the right size than to try and sew with exactly the right size of fabric to start with. Now this is going to go right sides down over the top of my bag. From this point, you, you may have seen me do this quite a few times before, but you did ask, so we'll do it again. And I'm going to sew down the middle of the zip like so. So let's start with the zip open. And you can measure that to make sure that they are equidistant from each end if you like. I've just done that by eye. And I'm just going to move my needle to the left hand side. Uh, not that one. That's the one. And so straight down the middle. So just keep lining up the edge of the zip to the edge of the fabric. Pin it if you like. When you come to the zip, stop with the needle down, lift the foot up and wiggle this out of the way. If you've got an extra five presser foot lift, then that may be useful for you. So that's sewn into the one side like that and then we'll take the opposite side of the bag just make sure I've got that the right way around and so the opposite side of the zip here so make sure that the edges of the bag are lined up and the edges of the zip is also lined up 
and so. And again, when I'm coming up to the slider, foot up, you may have to fiddle around under here to get hold of it and move it out of the way. And then we'll carry on. Now with these tabs on the end as well, I wouldn't make them too big. Because you imagine um, when you've got the tabs on each side, if they're any bigger than this, you haven't got a very wide opening to actually put things inside the bag. So I would say a finished size of around about an inch and a half or an inch would be fine. And then I'm just going to chop off the ends of these like so. pop those in the bin like that okay so I'm not going to sew around the zip yet we need to put the lining on so let's just open that up just make sure I've got that the right way around and the lining needs to go on the opposite side of the zip so the zips sandwiched in the middle of the two pieces and I sew from this side because I want to sew over the same line that I've just sewn. So where's that slide? Oh, it's down there. Okay, so line up the edge of the fabrics together, the edge of the fabrics this side together, and we'll just sew down the same line here. And then we need to do the same on the opposite side. Who have I missed? Yes, Marion, it is. It's one of our fabric designs. It's a Daisy Lane one. So Kim worked on this one and it's a fabric panel and it's brand new on the website. It's exclusive on the website. We don't supply anybody else with these panels apart from Crate and Craft and Crate and Craft don't have this one. They've got the bigger version of it. So this one's half the price. So have a look on debbieshawsewing.com and oh, can't you tell when the thread's undone? It's weird, isn't it? We talked about that before. Got no thread at all in there. Um, have a run out. No, I've just come and done. Your machine sounds different for some reason when it's running out of thread. So just really quickly do this, which is really quickly on this machine, I have to say. It's really simple to thread. She said, thread. Needle down and up. Ah, ah, won't let me thread without the foot down. That's a smart machine. I've just pulled it out myself now. Um, yes, it is, Jenny. Daisy Lane is our panels. It's a company that Kimberly and myself set up together. So it will have its own dedicated area of the website at some point. But we both work equally on that one. And we both come up with the designs and there'll be lots of things coming its way. We're working on a lot with it at the moment. Oh, Rita's got a baby lot that tells her when a thread goes wonky. You've got a posh machine, Rita. I didn't know machines could do that. Hi, Debbie. Can't stop all the blooming babies keep coming, <laughs> keep coming says Tracy. <laughs> have we come and threaded again? I think we have. I don't know why that happened. We'll do it again. It's a pleasure to thread this machine. I don't mind at all. Ah, threads got caught in the top. Chat amongst yourselves for a second while I just do this again. Chatting amongst yourselves any whether I tell you to or not. You just chat. I think it's wonderful. Um, there we go. Oh, Cheryl's on holiday in the Peak District. How lovely. My father's family for, from um, Buxton which is uh, kind of en route, isn't it? Okay, so so you, you, you might have seen me do this kind of thing before, but it's the tabs that we're concentrating on this one. So the second side of the lining needs to go on the opposite side of the zip. So let's do that in the same way. The zip sandwiched in between the two pieces, line up all of the edges, sew down the piece that you've already sewn. While I'm just doing that, it's Seamless Sunday again on Create and Craft on Sunday. Um, we do Seamless Sunday every six weeks. And if you weren't aware, it is a six hour sewing show. 
So normally, I mean, they normally do sewing shows on a Sunday, to be fair, um, but their shows are one hour long. So with this one, we've mashed it up a bit and we've got shows that are half an hour, shows that are 40 minutes, shows that are an hour, shows that we'll come back to again. My thread's broke again. What, what's going on here? We'll do it again. Um, and it's it's really popular, actually. So, why are you doing that? Um, this time we have ah, we have a dedicated um, email address. Got the wrong size spool holder on it, didn't I? We have a de dedicated email address, which I have posted on Facebook already. It's um, seamless Sunday at creationcraft.com. And I did put a note on face um, on YouTube, so hopefully if you're a subscriber, you would have got that as well. And um, you can email in now. We'll correlate all of the emails before Sunday. And it would be nice, actually, if you wanted to send any pictures in, because when you send any pictures into Creation Craft, they can't just put them straight to air. They have to format them, which is why a lot of the time when you send any pictures, they can't be showed to air or it's too late or they've moved on to something else and the pictures aren't relevant anymore. So they, they don't just, you know, oh, here's an email. On air it goes. They have to format everything. So it just takes quite a while. So it's quite nice if you wanted to show any photos. If you send them in early, then um, they can get everything formatted ready before the show. So we've had quite a few already. Um, but I was thinking if you've got any, any questions for any of my guests, and they're, they're all listed on Facebook. Um, but we have uh, Karen from Seams Beauty, so that's that wonderful hand cream and, and hand care. Um, we've got um, Hayley Smith from Craft Yourself Silly. There's Sarah Payne, she's going to be doing a Brother Embroidery Machine. And Trisha, Trisha Ablett from so, so Totally Trisha. Trisha's been a mate of mine for years. It's going to be really nice to work with her again. Um, so if you have any questions or if you've got any funny questions or comments, that would be really nice as well. So let's have a little bit of fun. If you've got a joke that you want to tell us, even better if it's a sewing related joke, what was the um, your worst make, your worst nightmare, the funniest thing you ever did, and the most ridiculous thing you ever did sewing wise, then come and let us know. So email in, um, oh, what was it again, seamless Sunday at creatingcraft.com. So we'll save up all of your emails for Sunday. I'll put, I'll put another post, actually, before the weekend about that. But that, that would be loads of fun. Um, it was the, the spool holder, Lisa. I've got a, a, one of those small pieces of, small pieces, small bobbins of thread in the top and a big thing, and it was catching on it. So I put the little one on, and that seems to be fine now. Thank you. Uh, Tracy's been given a bag of sewing bits that were a grandma's. Oh, how wonderful. Lots of needles and threads, but in a month I found a doll needle and a lovely old-fashioned bodkin. Oh, and pinking shears. How lovely. <gasps> right. So I've got that. So if you wanted to press that, I don't think I need to with this one, then do so. Then I'm going to sew all the way around the edge of the zip, and that's going to hold everything in place and stop the lining actually kind of feeding back to the um, into the teeth of the zip again. So needle can go back into the centre position. And let's just sew all the way around. So I'm pulling the lining away from the zip underneath here. Stop again when you get to the slider. Move it out of the way. Make sure everything's nice and flat. And to the bottom. I do that, then I'm here, above the mouldy old door. I could do that as well. I forget I can do that sometimes. So again, just sewing straight around the edge. Make sure the line is away from the zip. Don't need to move the slider actually. Around this corner. Now I'm back down again. And snip. So we've got this. The thing is, I have to keep pressing the button to do that. It doesn't automatically do it when I change cameras. So that's what we've got. And then right sides together. We'll sew all the way around. But where we've got these tabs in the side, I've got like a, 
it's three dimensional. I've got like an H shape there. So what I need to do when I'm sewing it, when I come to this bit, is to push it in towards the lining side. So I'm going to start from just before then, just to make sure I do it. Let's see if I can line up the side bits here so the pattern on my fabric matches, which always helps, doesn't it? When you get a pattern match. And we'll sew all the way around. And I'm just using the edge of my sewing machine foot as a guide. Um, so that, oh, lovely. Coffee, I would love a coffee, thank you. And you're being honoured. Yeah? yeah? It's my cup. Since when have you been the boss? <laughs> thank you. Our door needs a little paint, you know. Our door? Our, do our door down there. Our, our door, that's our door down there. It's, it's all mucky. Your accent's coming out now. <laughs> that wasn't my accent. I don't know where that came from. So we just sew all the way around. Important to push that little bit down into the lining though because otherwise the zip at the end will stick up instead of going into the bag. And important as well to leave a turning gap, either in the side or the bottom, whatever your preference is. Has he got flip-flops on? I don't know, you can see his feet. <laughs> they saw your feet. So turning up here. And have the difficult time fusing viscose to bosal foam, really. Who was that? Chris. Um, Hotter, test test the, the viscose first, it should be okay, but a really hot iron and bows are like steam. So start in the centre, try not to push the fabric because it will kind of twist a little bit. Um, so just, just uh, starting in the centre and maybe padding the iron up and down to start with just to secure it. Yes, I'm going to make sure the zip's open before anybody comments. I bet you've noticed that already. Um, Oh no! Oh, I hope she's going to be all right, Lisa. She's Ruby's temperature is 40 degrees, waiting for the doctor. Oh, let us know as she gets on. Don't worry if you have to rush off. Um, two blue legs. Two blue legs as is, as is in jeans. He'll come and say hello one day. All right, put that there. Can you see his feet? Oh, is it oh, I see. Yes, when it came through the door. I was thinking he'd have to put his, have to put his, um, his feet on the counter for you to see his feet, but yes, from that angle. So when's the doctor come in, Lisa? Is he on his way or is she on her way? Um, and if you're really worried, I wouldn't wait for a doctor. I'd just done 999. Pink toenails. He paints his toenails very well, I think. Mm. Mm. <laughs> no, he hasn't got hobbit feet. Um, okay, so I'm going to square the base because I think it looks nice. So I know you have seen this a hundred times before. Just pull the sides away from each other so that the side seam sits over the base seam. And then we're going to sew straight across at around about an inch and a half from the point. So I'm not going to measure that because I've done it a million times. Let's go back. I can go backwards with the foot pedal, but I'm still getting used to that. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, back, 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 back. Back, back, back again. Ha, yeah, see, that's me. Oh, this is waiting for the doctor call. She's at home, not in. Oh, okay. Okay, Lisa, I thought she was with you. Yeah, let, let us know. Let us know what happens because we're all going to be worried about her now. Um, Diane's upgraded her machine, bought one from Create and Craft. It's so weird. I can now sew without a foot pedal. <laughs> I've always had, well, for a long, long time, I've had a machine without a foot pedal, but I always use the foot pedal. Just the habit you get into, I suppose, isn't it? Oh, snip, 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 down, snip. I'll read the manual one of these days, um, and then we'll cut those corners off. And bin them, or floor them, as Lisa thinks I do. Um, Sally Ann says she's hoping your Ruby is okay. Getting lots of messages on Facebook as well, Lisa. So yeah, keep us up, keep us informed. Uh, Friday's a year since my dad passed. Oh, Denise, I'm sorry. 
Um, oh, Friday's going to be so hard. Always will be. Always will be, Denise. You, you just, yeah. You never get over it. You just get used to it. It's 25 years since my dad died, 20 years since my mum died. Anyway, um, so the same with the lining. Foot down. Bit of backwards and a bit of forwards. Lisa says thank you to everyone on Facebook. And snip. Lifted the foot up before it snipped properly, didn't I? Um, Wednesday lesson on fusing different fabrics to different waddings. That would be a nice idea, Chris. I need to get organised with some um, some of the waddings and interfacings that we do on the website. Um, most of the ones that we do are fusible because I like a fusible wadding or interfacing. That's, that's the only reason why. Uh, right. I'm not going to sew the whole clothes. Oh, Dennis, Dad was 90 yesterday. Congratulations to your dad. <gasps> Snip those off. And then we'll turn it through and have a look. Oh, those tabs are looking like... It should be fabulous. I do. Oh. Um, okay, so let's push that through. I don't think I need to iron this. I think it's been okay without... So I might just switch that off before I forget. We've got non, not got a Laura here today. I haven't seen any comments from Laura. Maybe she's busy. And Nancy. Do we have Nancy? Do we have Brian? Where are you? Um, unless I missed you. Sorry if I missed you. I've had my head down sewing a bit, so I might have missed your comments. But you're normally there. Uh, just back from USA and had to put on several layers to get warm. Our village hall is freezing. Oh, is it Jill? Um... It's the thing when you come back from a hot country, isn't it? Even though it's probably one of the mildest winters ever here, it still feels cold, doesn't it, when you've come back from somewhere warm. Anyway, this is what I'm doing. So let's just poke out the ends here. So even though I made the tabs about an inch and a half long, they're only little diddy things. So that's why I say don't leave them, don't make them too small or too short at the ends, because then you will find that you won't get any fabric showing and that will, you know, the zip will just disappear into the end. So it's a little less bulky than having the zip go straight down into the bottom. So I'll sew that gap together at a different, I might not actually. But I just wanted to show you as well with the panels. I mentioned earlier about not, see, it's the same with the known ones. Don't think that just because you've got a whole load of squares, you've got to cut out a whole load of squares. Oh, here's Brian, here he is. Um, you just use them like regular fabric. It doesn't matter if you cut into them. You don't have to see every one of the squares. It's just like a patchwork piece of fabric. Um, and these were, um, I, I cut the fabric about three inches by two inches and then cut them down again. So the actual tabs are about one and a half inches long. I mean, they could be a little bit deeper, but as I said previously, if you go to um, too, too far in with your tabs, then you'll have a very small opening for your zip. That lined up pretty well, didn't it? Yeah, see, still got it. Um, okay, so, shall we clean a sewing machine? Oh, you, oh, sorry. U3A. What's U3A? Not UEA. I, I, don't, I don't need to talk about Jill. UEA and U3A. I don't know UEA and U3A are. Let me know. But she's off to Australia next week. Oh, wow. Um... Hello from Maryland. Thank you very much. Right, so that's that. I have brought it. I'm not going to clean this machine because I've barely used it, so there shouldn't be any fluff in it. However, this little one, I bet is really mucky. So I just need to see if I have a screwdriver in here. Sorry about the noise. That will do. So, um, ha always have a look at your manufacturer's instructions before you start cleaning. Um, my Janome, which is um, now in for repair, um, 
It was. I was told that I should be taking this end bit off here. There was a screw in the end, and take that off, and then you can see all of the take-up lever and everything inside, and just uh, just out in there. But if it's not obvious that that comes off, don't take it off because you're not supposed to. But it should say in your manual what you need to do. See, that's got a screw on it, so maybe I do with that one. But oh, always read your manual because it'll vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. I wonder if I have one of those little key-shaped ones. And so she cleans her machines a lot. I do, yes. Oh, well, that's a fancy one. Um, I do mine. It makes a difference, doesn't it, Anne? If you're having, so I'm just having a sip of coffee. If you're having skips to U3, uh, University of Third Age, is that is that a thing? Um, can you use the overhead cam? I'll, I'll use the one at the side, Lisa, if you can, if I see inside there, that might work a little bit better. Um, third age oh i've not heard of it. university of the first not heard of that before not heard of that um right so um so yeah manufacturer's instructions machine off and while you're here it's a good idea to change your needle as well so you might see better there and you might see better if i bring it over here and shuffle up and move my iron out of the way. So I clean my machine, um, oh gosh, twice a week, but I use it every day, more often. I'll always clean my machine after I've done anything with um, fleece or wadding or anything that's fibrous like that from sewn through felt, because you'll find it just builds up inside your machine very quickly. If you're having skipped stitches on your sewing machine, try cleaning it, um, try changing your needle. It, it really does help. It can make a big difference when you clean it all out. Um, I need a little paintbrush, which I did bring down with me, so hold that in a moment, Cora. I'll just have a look what I've done with that. Lost it. Oh, there we go. Right, there we go. So you'll probably have that comes with your machine um a little tool with brushes on the end of it i don't tend to use that i tend to use just a like a kid's paintbrush something just really cheap i find it gets into the nooks and crannies a little bit better so let's have a look at this and take the foot off just so i can get to it better when you undo these screws put them somewhere safe because you don't get spares with your machines normally oh that's on tight Okay, so we'll take these out. Come on. There we go. And again, make sure. Oh, Denise takes hers for an MOT. She was fast. That is a good idea. So that comes out there. Yeah, I have done a cleaning video on um, on YouTube. So if you wanted to take a look at that, that may be helpful for you too. But again, I can't stress enough that you read your manual first and if you haven't got your manual have a look online see if your manufacturer has made a video for it because they do all change come on have you got there we go let's just take that out oh and says if you've got thread closures clean them more absolutely um oh here you are laura i didn't see you earlier yes it's it's been on i haven't used it and it's off again and then we'll lift this out Have a look underneath here because you may have a bit of fluff knocking around there so just wiggle around all your bits bobbin can come out oops oh this is filthy oh so this is the bobbin hook so we're going to just dust around here like so consider you know we, we must have been doing some quilting with this because this is one of the machines that I used, down, used to use down here all the time before I got my new one. And I'd clean it every week. And I just, oh, a bit embarrassing to show you what's going on in there now, actually. Now you've got a metal base on these for the most part. And that is because in the bottom of here, you have a magnet. This is a magnet. And this helps to hold the hook in place. In the centre of there, it may look or feel like a little bit of fluff right in the middle. It's not. It's a wick. 
So that's where you're going to put a few drops of oil if your machine takes oil. So just in the center there. So don't try and pick that out. It's tempting to try to, because it does look and feel like a little bit of fluff. And then literally all you're going to do is to whiz this around and it's like scooping up, oh gosh, look at this. It's like scooping up candy floss. And I think this is how the paintbrush helps. What I don't want you to do is to blow inside here because you'll just be pushing the dirt further inside and you'll be introducing damp into your machine and you don't want to do that. So just wherever you can see it, just flick around. You know, you can get quite deep inside your machine. Don't poke anything too hard because you don't know what's going on down there. But you can just kind of tickle around with your brush. Make sure you go in between the teeth of your feed dogs. Because if you've got any fluff in there, your feed dogs aren't going to be working right. That can cause skip stitches. And we just kind of whiz around like that. And that is basically all you need to do. As far as oiling your machine, um, have a look in your manual. Some machines you do, some you don't. Some will recommend that you, only the person that you take it to be serviced will um, should be putting oil in there. But if you do, again, it's just in that wick, just in the middle there. I can't believe what's coming out of here. That's quite disgraceful. This machine is going to sew so smoothly after. Right, I think that will, that will do. Bit in there, bit in there. Could maybe come around for a different angle and flick it in there and get in this bit and there. Oh, it's still coming out, look. So coming backwards. So just take your time and whiz around it. Look at that. That's it. That's just from a week. Now that's going to make a big difference. So let's drop this back in again. Don't force it in. You will have probably a little red dot on the side here that needs to line up with its equivalent over this side. But if you're not sure, try it. It should drop into place. Don't force it, don't push it. Just wiggle around until it drops. And if you want to just spin the needle up and down, I've taken it out. This is the race and just make sure that that's going around without everything flicking all over the place. Then that's, uh, then that's fine. And it's got like a little nodule here that holds it in place. Okay. And that's all you need to do. So when was the last time you cleaned your machine? It's quite, oh, I can see another bit of dust there. Come on out. It's quite um, therapeutic, to be honest. Oh, that was right in the feed dogs. It's, yes, it's quite satisfying to get all of this out and give it a, give it a good old clean. Um, Karen says, when I bought my sewing machine, one machine I'd all in view that didn't, so I take it that, that one didn't or I uh, didn't need it. Um, yeah, have it, uh, probably not. There's, they sell some machines as being self-lubricating, and I've been told that there's no such thing as a self-lubricating sewing machine, which doesn't kind of make sense, does it? So the best thing to do would be, I think, to get in touch with the manufacturers and just ask them what you need to do. And um, you can use a magnetic pin dish to put your screws in. That is a good idea, Gina. Because if one of these rolls onto your shag pile carpet, it's going to take you an age to find it again. Um, oh, by the needle gets fluffy too. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Let's have a look under there, Laura. I just pop those back on with my fancy screwdriver from a fancy new sewing machine. So you're not, not past it yet. But I may pass you on to the kids. Um... Bloodwin's going to clean hers when we've finished. I just enjoy doing it. It's satisfying. Let's have a look underneath. So I'll put the foot back on again. So some machines will open up at the front. What am I doing there? Putting it on the wrong bit. So you can you can literally open that up. This one doesn't. Mwah. Can you see from there? So again, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go too far inside here but if you see anything that's quite clean actually so i wouldn't go sticking the brush right up in there but if you just see any fluff around here around the needle around the top of the needle 
no round the needle clamp then there's no harm in doing that is there round the light oh bit in there you see there and then of course servicing the machine um different people have different opinions on that mine only tend to be every couple of years if i can afford to miss them so i should probably get the machine serviced a lot more than i actually do but seeing as you know how much these are on the go just pop that back in there because that's where you belong there. Lovely. um on my embroidery machines i don't all brother brother persona i do oil in the bobbin area yeah see they all vary don't they so it's, it's, it's quite quite difficult to do um a video on this is how you clean your machine because they are all different um Amanda did hers today, Anna did hers yesterday, Lisa's got the same machine as my new one. I'm going to clean mine now, thanks for the reminder. Ginny lives cleaning the machine as well. Once a year whether it needs it or not, says Christine. It's a good idea, isn't it? I'm servicing, I'm assuming, not cleaning. Um, oh, what did Carol say? Oh, my machine is non-oiling, but you must oil the middle wick under the bobbin. Yes, and make sure that you, you use sewing machine oil as well, not um, whatever you put in the car. Stephanie did hers yesterday. Jolly good. Okay, look. Um, never had my machine serviced in the 10 years I've had it. Not all it either, but I do clean it often. Some machines, I didn't um, for a while actually, Janet, have a, a machine service. And it was, um, people used to say, well, how often should you have your machine serviced? And I thought, well, the, the manufacturers normally recommend every two years. I never did. But I have started to do that. But there again, I do thrash my machines a bit and certainly now I'm, I've moved on to quite expensive machines which I never used to use I'm uh, a bit more aware no WD for no not WD40 um, stuff so it's got a wick in the bobbin area so the wick will take the oil down and disperse it to where it needs to be so it doesn't actually oil the bobbin which is I mean don't put too much in there just put a few drops and, and the wick will take it down into the mechanics um, Christine yes you should feel guilty. Go clean your machine. Poor machine. <laughs> right, so that is that. Well, that's it for today. Um, so what day is it? It's Wednesday, isn't it? Saturday, we're going to make a hot water bottle cover with fleece. Um, then I can now do my two sewing machines at the same for your overlocker to clean. Yeah, oh, yes, um, absolutely. Just make sure it's switched off. Well, well, normally when you open the door, your overlocker doesn't work anyway, does it? But yeah, just give it a tickle around with a paintbrush and that should um, that should be fine. Uh, once a year. I think Brenda, it depends how often you use it. But from any of the manufacturers that I've spoken to of different sewing machines, that it doesn't impede the, war the warranty if you don't have it serviced on a regular basis. So whenever you think. So yes, yeah, Saturday, um, hot water bottle cover. Sunday, seamless Sunday. Oh yes, I'm creating craft, can't wait. Um, remember, to, uh, if, if you can, if you've got any suggestions, if you'd like to see any particular guests, um, or if you want to share with us a funny story, or no, certainly your pictures, and seamless Sunday at creatingcraft.com. I will put another post on Facebook and message all my followers on YouTube later on as well. Um, Rita says, my daughter uses a hot water bottle for her monthly visitor, great idea. Yeah, that, and, and certainly at the moment when we're turning the heating down as well. Nice idea there. Um, how much use it gets? Yeah, it's difficult to gauge, isn't it, Anna? Because how much use should it have? They should. I don't know if, if any machines do. Um, they should have a stitch count on the machine, um, like like a mileometer on your car. So when you've done so many stitches, it'll say, run now it's, it's time for a service, just like your car would be a good idea. Um, Okay, just let me know, Lisa. There's more important things than, than lives, isn't there? So you go be with your family. Um, bye, Anne. Thank you. So, yeah, see you Sunday, and then I shall see you again next Wednesday. don't know what we're doing yet, but we'll have a chat about that on um, on Saturday. Um, half the article of secondary projects, if you didn't see, are the ones here. So you should have those. What date is it? You should have those now, so I can't wait to see your pictures there. And we do have... Um, the projects that Kim made here with the wall hanging with the present design on the blog, on the website, on Debbie Shaw Sewing, and the stocking behind me here is a, now a download on there as well if you are interested. Okay. Dorothy says, and counter of how much thread. Yes, that's a good idea as well, like how much fuel you use. That would be a good idea. Um, okay, you'll all have a wonderful time. I'll just do a bit of housework over here. Bear with me one moment, please. Um, I'm making a polar bear at the moment. It's going to be a big one, Laura. 
is, is sitting about this big at the moment. It's a little bit of trial and error because I make these patterns up. And at the moment, his nose is pointing north like that. It looks a bit silly, so I need to work on the neck. But he's going to be a big polar bear for the next month's project. Come on. Not going anywhere at the moment. I have to do this bit before I go. Always does this, doesn't it? Um, daughter came home with the gift of the gab, says June. It's nice to have a daughter with the gift of the gab, though, isn't it? Come on. Um, right, I've done that. Later, good kiss for Ruth. Thank you. I learned about quilting from a local member of U3H. I've never heard of that. I have to look. I'll Google it. I should Google it. Hi, Alicia, and bye from Mexico. Hi, Yoti, and bye, and bye, everybody. Um, okay, so I shall, I shall see you again on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. Thank you for joining me today. I shall see you soon. Bye bye.